The reason why this is my least favorite Harry Potter movie is because I'm too old for this movie now. That is because this movie is for a younger audience. And some things the younger audience liked, but I don't, is the music composed by Williams, photography with much light, and that it isn't a real threat in this movie until the final battle. I think that this thing is not necessarily bad, because it's smart to let the audience be around the same age as Harry, and though the movie is more and more dark, the older Harry and the audience become. This movie also had to set up the Harry Potter universe, and add some stuff that isn't too important for this movie, but is important later on. That is necessary, but made it less fun to watch this movie. I liked this movie when I saw it for the first time, but I think this movie gets worse and worse with each watch. That is probably because it's not much that happened in this movie that affects the later Harry Potter movies. I think it's only three things that happen in this movie that is kind of important for the following movies. The first one is a series Black Dice. The second one is that the building an army that plays a small role in the Deathly Hallows Part 2. And the most part of all is that the Ministry got to know that Voldemort is back. The reason why this movie is higher than the Philosopher's Stone is the character I love to love, Luna Lovegood, the character I love to hate, Dolores Umbridge, and an epic fight on the Ministry, especially the one between Voldemort and Dumbledore. This movie would probably be higher on many people's list, but I have a few problems with it that made it too low. The first thing is time traveling. Yeah, I know, it's a very cool climax, but the time traveling system works even worse than Back to the Futures, where you can change the time you have already lived in. Because here, Harry saved himself with himself, but the do that he had to survive, that he would never have, and if he haven't would made it for the first time, he wouldn't have made it at all. In all honesty, that's a problem in the book too, and it's not many movies that made time traveling working. The only movie that I have seen that I succeed with that is Well Monkeys. And that is the boring, but true fact that you can never change history. What have happened, have happened, and you can't change it. The next thing is the scene where Patrick will flee. He can only succeed with that because Harry Potter let him live. You can basically say that the fact that Voldemort come back in the next movie is Harry Potter's fault. The best scene in this movie is in my opinion the Gringotts scene. It's so well made and the CGI dragon looks terrific. Just everything about it is just so nice. The sound effects and all the bank how it looked like is just so great. Otherwise I'm not too excited about this movie. It's well done but I think it's moved forward too fast. I also miss a lot of Dumbledore's backstory that is in the book. Some scenes are really good like Snape's backstory and the part where they kill the Horcruxes. But again, I think this movie should have been longer and have more build-ups. The one fight in the end is also not a good climax in my opinion. They have have it in the part 4 and Dumbledore and Voldemort have it in the part 5 and they have it in the Deathly Hallows part 1 and now they have one more and I don't think it's so great. The part where they are 19 years older should also have been removed in my opinion. Overall, a fine finale of the Great Harry Potter Saga. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire do a fantastic job in handling two stories at the same time. The main story is about Harry in the Truisa Tournament, and the other one is about a traitor that have escaped from Azkaban and now is in Hogwarts in the name of Moody. These stories work well together because the Moody story affects the Harry story. It's Moody who let Harry be in part of the tournament, and it's Moody's plan to lead Harry to Voldemort. The tributes of the tournament is also very good in my opinion, and I like how each part is linked to each other. First you have to catch an egg from a dragon, then the egg sings for you a song that is however my favorite scene in the entire movie. Dunkstone gives you a gigantic clue what the next step will be. The points you get from the judges in that part and the first part gives you different times to the last thing you have to do. The only issue I have with this movie is that Voldemort could have easily killed Harry but chose to fight with him instead to show his support and that he's back and he had never been stronger. What in my opinion makes this movie so much better than The Philosopher's Stone, even if it's the same director and even if both movies are kind of childish. But this one will have a much clearer goal. 
and that in this movie also have a real kind of threat to Harry, which is something the first one doesn't have. I also like the legend about the Chamber of Secrets, and the journey they have to go through to save their school. How they have to figure out everything about the chamber by themselves, and how they have to search for what's in the chamber by themselves. And then the finale comes that is so well done. Another thing that I like is that here they do something necessary. In the first one there is the Philosopher's Stone, here they're saving Hogwarts. If the Goblet of Fire was the Harry Potter movie that handled two parallel stories at the same time, best, I think, the half broad prince is second on this list. The main story is about Harry trying to find the weakness of Voldemort, and the other one is about Draco Malfoy. I really like the dark tune this movie have, and how Harry and Dumbledore have to cooperate to slowly and carefully get the secret from Snaghorn with Harry as a worm on a hook. The flashback montages is also one of the main reasons why this is my number two. The first time I saw this movie was on a very small DVD with my mother and I fell in love with it immediately and it became my favorite movie. It's not that good now, but I still think it's a terrific movie. This movie is the darkest of the Harry Potter movies, and we see what hard this mission is that they come across the friendship between the characters we love, Harry, Ron and Hermione of course. In this movie we see how they have to fight just to get and destroy one Horcrux, and at the same time we have a side story about the death of the Hallows, that works very well together because it affects the story even if it's not too important. There's just so much in this movie going around that I love. The motorcycle fight, when they break into the ministry, the escape from Bellatrix's house, the scene where they fight against Nagini, the Deathly Hallow story, a wall in one long great church journey. This one also has a great ending that I think have to end my list.